This is Tomo from Japan. Uh, nice to meet you, Tomo. Nice to meet you. you. I know who you are, of course. And uh, thank you so much for uh, taking your time to do the interview for Japan. Well, thank you for getting up so early. It's only six o'clock in the morning for you, I think. <laughs> All right. Well, it's okay. I work 24-7 anyway. So, uh, I mean, I would stay all night to speak to Sao Salo. Um, oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've waited more than 40 years. So, one, oh, night, you're very kind. one night is nothing. I am really glad that you are back in the uh, Classics Nouveau band with a brand new album, Battle Cry. You know, you. I get very emotional. I probably would have fallen in love with the album, even if it's the first time I heard the album. I mean, your, your band, but uh, obviously because of the, uh, you know, it's the soundtrack of my, uh, you know, early teens. So, uh, and it's different, but it's similar. So, and I get very emotional and the songs are great anyway. Thank you. Yes. Well, of course, uh, we have some elements of the eighties, you know, you can, you can tell there's the style of, uh, the band that we were, but right. we didn't, we thought it would be stupid to try and reproduce. Uh, the music of 40 years ago mm -hmm. so we decided to make the music of today but bearing in mind where we come from and yep. so I hope we we found a good balance oh so did you guys record the uh battle cry album remotely or did you guys get in with the same studio and record stuff well uh bp the drummer he came down yeah. to florida because oh, yeah. we both live in america but the others uh, had mm -hmm. to perform remotely yes so um, you have a extensive album, you know, liner notes on the album, and uh, you know that kind that kind of tells a story about how the band got back together. Like, you know, you have a Facebook fan page, you know, and uh, you discovered like a couple of years ago that uh, there are still lots of uh, enthusiastic fans around the world. So you kind of uh, decided to, you know. You know, give them a, as you quote, you know, birthday present. Well, well really, it's a surprise. It's a surprise because uh, yeah. I really, I, I, we all thought Classics Nouveau was finished in 1985 and didn't mm. really think about it too much mm. uh, for many years afterwards. And yeah. so it was really a surprise that the fans would not let go. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, and, and even when you realize, especially when people get older, how much they appreciate what you've done. It's quite humbling, right. really. Um, right. when, we see them, when we see them posting uh, tickets from years ago, you know, yeah. badges and posters, and this means something to their lives. Mm. So mm. In a way, I think we knew that music, especially pop music, rock music, is the soundtrack mm. of the youth. Usually, oh, yeah. for, our, yeah. for our generation, yeah. and so the people were into the Stones or Bowie or whoever it was, mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin, you know, that mm -hmm. that always has a special place in people's mm -hmm. lives. Right. But I think the, the thing that is different is it mm -hmm. seemed that many years ago people would kind of grow out of it, they'd get older, and other things would replace that, and mm -hmm. so they weren't, they weren't thinking so much, or maybe. I imagine that people would, would like Frank Sinatra when they got old or just classical <laughs> music. <laughs> yeah. But in fact, in I'm... fact, it, it kind of seems like people just absolutely have wanted to hold on to what was special to them and carry it through their mm. whole lives. Yeah. And so we, we kind of hope that maybe this new album adds mm. to that soundtrack because mm. yeah. we, didn't try, we didn't try to be teenagers again, but instead, <laughs> Mm. We've spoken about how it is to be a mature person now. Right. And, yeah. and so a lot of things in the messages of the songs, they're really reflections on where we are in life now or sometimes mm. looking back a little bit at mistakes or things we might have done differently. Right. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, when you re-recorded re stuff, you know, was it uh, how, how comfortable were you reconnecting with the other guys? Have you always been in touch with the other guys? When you got back together, uh, no, we were not really in touch oh. Oh. For, for a very for a very long time, mm. and I think it's probably part of this 
maturing process, you know, yeah. maybe when you get to about 45, 50 years old, you start thinking of people you mm. used to be friends with. Even for me personally, I ended up connecting mm. with some of my school friends who I didn't speak mm. to since <laughs> <the> teenagers. <laughs> Mm. And I, ne I never thought I'd be interested in that. But then somebody comes into your mind, you think, yeah, you know, I like that guy when we were at school. I wonder what he's doing now. Mm. Mm. And so I think we had sort of started to have some contact before we came to do this. Mm. But it was certainly not contact that we thought was going to lead to um, right. recording or doing anything again together, mm. really. Mm. So you kind of knew their email address or social media address? Social media, mostly either emails or Facebook or something like right. that. You know, right. Uh, right. That's, yeah. that's another one of the great advantages we have mm. now. It's so yeah. easy to be in touch with people. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the uh, title of the record is uh, Battle Cry. When we're yet to lie from breathing, this will be a battle cry. So, uh, you know, is music a battle? I think when we were young, mm. we, uh, we thought 30 was old or 40 was old, and mm. now we find ourselves much older than that, and we feel well, life is not done yet. We've got plenty still to do, plenty still to give. Mm. And so in the song Battle Cry, then uh, we say, you know, the, there's there's oceans to cross over, there's mountains still to climb, there's, mm. there's so much still to do. We're not ready to kind of sit down and uh, fade away, really. You know, that's the that's the point of the battle cry. Again, it's like an anthem for our age group now. You know, people uh, uh. Pe people who are mature but are not ready to be old. It's like, mm. let's do all the things while we still can. Let's appreciate. We can still walk. We can still talk. We can still yeah. uh, enjoy music and everything else, really. And one song that say, says something to our generation definitely is the uh, nostalgic and sentimental No Do Overs, which is a tribute to the uh, 1980s. So did you pick the songs that you liked or did, uh, did you pick the uh, titles that uh, that make sense to the lyrics and uh, maybe some of the songs that you don't necessarily like? Uh, well, I think, first of all, we, we probably have to uh, tell the listeners, in case anybody doesn't understand, that on No, no Do Overs, the entire lyrics are made up of hit songs from yeah, the 1980s. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I don't think I was really thinking so much about songs I like as mm -hmm. kind of sort of trying to tell a story mm -hmm. with setting myself those, those titles, the limitations of titles. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and in the end, the conclusion in the chorus obviously is that, that these are the days that have gone and there's 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 no do-overs. We, we cannot go back. It's all, it's all over and done now. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting for me that some people, when they hear it, don't even realize, you know, mm. they just, I guess they either they're not listening closely to the lyrics or they just think it's telling a story of moving on or whatever in a poetic way. Mm. Um, but for, for people, even actually in my own band, uh, BP, our drummer, at first, he didn't mm. spot it. And then I mentioned it to him one day and he went back and he said, <laughs> wow, that's really clever, like all of those songs mm. and starts mm. to spot the songs in there. Mm. So I think this is a, a song that has more than one layer to it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I, I, I kind of like that, you know, if you want. And, and that mm. actually is going to be our next single. So oh, there will okay. Be there will be a music video with it. It will oh. come out on, on the day of the album release, November the 17th. Oh. Okay. And so, so when you see the, the video that goes with it, it's mm. it's sort of like telling a story of our mm. maturity in life and so on, looking back a little nostalgic. Mm. Some people mm. say a little sad, although we mm. also want it mm. to be not depressing. And mm. so a lot of people of our generation now they've got grandchildren and families yeah, yeah. so mm. in the video we show mm. some people doing things with their little grandchildren and so on mm -hmm. and yeah. so it almost adds a third layer to that yeah we got the songs oh, from the 80s that we all live through yeah. we've got yeah. the kind of reflection about looking back but also we've got a kind of optimistic look to right. the future as well yeah and yeah fourth layer probably is the inclusion of bark in that song. Oh, yes, <laughs> you're right, right. Air on a G string. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I I had the pleasure of interviewing people like 
Midjur or Tony Hadley for Spano Ballet. And, you know, what they would say is that they go to clubs on the pubs backstage and uh, they would bump into Lemmy from Motorhead and Phil Lynott yeah. from St. Lizzie. So did yes. you bump into those guys? Yeah, actually, funnily enough. <laughs> remember right. one time uh, I was with Steve Strange, actually. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so we did a radio show on the BBC mm. and then we went to a club. And mm. while we're sitting there, you, you're absolutely right. Phil Lynott came along and said hi. Lemmy <laughs> came along and said hi. <laughs> and uh, so what they described to you is exactly accurate, yes. Uh, everybody says that. You know, whoever whoever was around early 80s, you know, doing playing music, you know, they would say they would run into Lemmy or Phil Lynott. So. Well, and, and they were very nice people too, you know. I have to add that from their image, especially Lemmy, you know, you'd think this is going to be somebody really, you know, nasty and uh, mm. aggressive, but they were, they were, they seemed to be real gentlemen, you know. Um, mm. But you, you always kind of would find strange people in those days at things like one of the times when mm. we had a, uh, it was probably a party for one of our albums or something, and Chris Squire from Yes was there. Oh, okay. And I thought, that's strange, you know, he's, we, we thought they're a different generation, but I guess some people like to go to the parties, you know? Mm, mm, right. And, you know, we love, I mean, I, I love your music, I mean, and uh, lots of people in Japan love Classics Nouveau, but I noticed, I noticed that our new album is already being offered in Japan. I've seen the sites that are advertising oh, to order. Right, so, right. so I'm assuming there indeed is an audience in Japan, and I hope, oh, yeah. they, will, I hope they will get to hear about this and uh, will enjoy it. Fix your eyes up, says. So have you reached your goal yet? I haven't reached mine. So uh, can we expect uh, cl more from Classics and Uso and uh, like tools or further recordings? I, I really don't know, uh, because we did not expect this. And <laughs> so one of the great things one of the great things about being old is mm -hmm. that life is full of surprises. You know, mm -hmm. in one sense, you can say every day is a gift. And here right. we still are. So if we're alive, there's still, mm -hmm. as I said in Battle Cry, there's still mountains to climb and oceans to cross. Right. And so uh, we d we don't know what's around the corner, but because this this yeah. has turned out to be yeah. quite an exciting and enjoyable adventure, and so yeah. therefore we're open yeah. to whatever the future yeah. might bring. Okay, right. Uh, may I ask a couple of uh, quick questions? Yes. Uh, when you first heard Madonna's "Papa Don't Preach," did you feel that it ripped off? Is it a dream? No, I didn't. I never oh. even heard that until okay. much later. Much later, yeah. people started to um, message about that thing, so... Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, right. So the first concert that you went to was Led Zeppelin at Royal Albert Hall in 1970s. Did you revisit uh, that concert on the Led Zeppelin DVD? Uh, well, no, but I did uh, watch Led Zeppelin from the O2, which was in oh. the last, you know... Yeah, so because yeah. I had, since then, I had met John Paul Jones because mm. Nick Beggs was playing with him. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so I met them on tour. And mm. so after that, then when I watched the Led Zeppelin O2, mm. I was really impressed because mm. I thought, you know, there's only four people on stage and only three of them playing instruments. And in mm. particular, John Paul Jones playing the keyboards and everything. There was nothing missing. I thought, mm -hmm. this, is, this is so good. When I saw them as a child, you know, I would not have even known what was good or bad. It was just noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. now I can appreciate that they were really good. Mm. Okay. Right. So um, apparently you have worked with Les Roquettes in France in the uh, late 80s and early 90s. So what was the experience like? This, uh, it's actually longer than I imagined. You've, you've been uh, in the band for like eight years, right? Well, uh, it was kind of coming, coming and going because they, they were not doing things all of that time. I was talking okay. yesterday, mm. actually, with the leader of the Rockers. Okay. And uh, so I was, really, I was really a guest on two of their albums, and I did one oh. full album with them. Um, mm. I did a month of touring in Italy with them. That was fantastic. They, they're right. great musicians. They mm. do everything in a very professional way. And mm. uh, I think, actually, they're even better today. 
They've got mm-hmm. a great they've got a great band now, only one original member, but they've got a great singer and mm-hmm. all the music. Fantastic light show. And mm-hmm. so I uh, I have very fond memories of them. So I will try to spread the word and uh, hopefully some uh, record companies or promoters will uh, bring you over to Japan. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate your uh, your goodwill and very interesting questions. And, Thank you. Uh, I, I look forward to uh, seeing your piece and also maybe meeting you in person one day. Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. So in the meantime, I thank you so much for taking your time to do the interview then. Have a wonderful day, okay? okay. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.